We begin our report on the path towards recovery in Baltimore. Officials have peeled open a temporary passageway to let smaller vessels cross the section of the Patapsco River once spanned by the Francis Scott Key Bridge. By cutting through steel, but cutting through steel is no quick and easy feat. Crews have spent days meticulously removing large chunks of debris from the wreckage. On Friday, President Biden will see that wreckage himself. What awaits him, in the words of Maryland's governor, is a ship nearly the size of the Eiffel Tower and as heavy as the Washington Monument in the middle of the river. Nicole Skanga is following the story. She begins our coverage from Baltimore. Buoys in the water and a lifeline in the waterway. Definitely debris in the water. Uh, that's a big concern. The U.S. Coast Guard now marking clear sections of the channel and today opening up an alternate passageway for smaller ships. Nearby, sparks fly as crews surgically cut the steel remains of the key bridge. Tonight, they're poised to remove a 350-ton piece, but problems remain. What we're finding is it is more complicated than we had hoped for initially. These girders are essentially tangled together, intertwined, making it very difficult to figure out where you need to eventually cut. It is a mangled, cantilevered mess. Colonel S.D. Pinchasin, unified commander of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, says crews will scan the underwater superstructure of concrete and twisted metal after each cut. The bodies of two construction workers have been recovered, but four other victims are unaccounted for and presumed dead. As officials brace the dolly ahead of a potential storm system, U.S. Coast Guard Captain David O'Connell. So we've taken some precautions, put out uh, four anchors on the stern of the vessel to make sure that it's not going to move in a storm. The whole bridge just collapsed. Meanwhile, we're learning more about the very first officers to arrive by water to the scene of the crash. Absolutely. The head of the Maryland Transportation Authority Police Union tells us officers with the Marine unit raced to the port. They actually were the first first responder vessel to arrive on scene, and they actually rescued the one survivor from the water who was clinging to debris floating in the water. And Nicole Skanga joins me now. Nicole, if this temporary channel is step one to reopen the port, give us what do we know about what the next steps after that look like? Yeah, absolutely, John. This temporary channel is now open for business, and it's a first step on a long, long road. Now, we know that the deck of this channel is about 11 feet, so it can accommodate vessels that can operate in shallow waters. Things like tugs, some commercial barges, though not all commercial ships, and also, and this is key, boats that could bring more equipment to the site of the actual wreckage. Now, sometime in the next 24 hours, we're expecting a second lift. That first lift happened on Saturday night. This second lift will be bigger, 350 tons, and a crane will lift the steel wreckage from the north side, or what used to be the north side of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So, officials here clearly making some progress, but they say that what you and I see above the water accounts for only about 10% of the actual wreckage, and what is below is scary, according to officials, a mangled, chaotic mess where there are steel beams that are intertwined and must be surgically removed in order to ensure uh, no first responders, no divers get hurt in the process. So again, you know, this first channel, a first step, they are looking to open a second channel along the southern part of the waterway here. And then weeks, perhaps even longer from now, a third channel that can accommodate more commercial vessels uh, next to the main channel. Wow. Okay. Now to the people affected by this, or some of them anyway, the federal government has opened on-site offices for some small businesses to get disaster assistance. Who gets that assistance and what's being offered? Yeah, and just to give you a sense, John, according to a report from 2023, uh, the Maryland State Department of Transportation, the Port of Baltimore is responsible directly or indirectly for more than 50,000 jobs and a lot of small businesses now suffering in and around the port as a result of the loss of commerce here, uh, a yearly uh, commerce of of $80 billion uh, in foreign cargo that's brought into the port of Baltimore. 
Um, right now, the Small Business Administration has opened up a loan program, so small businesses can apply up to $2 million in uh, loans, low interest loans, uh, to account for lost revenues here. And just today, uh, Baltimore announcing that they will have two storefronts, uh, one in Baltimore City, one in Baltimore County, that will help uh, business leaders apply for these loans, that process, uh, which is to say nothing of the port workers, which mm. we're told help is on the way from the Maryland legislature. John. Nicole Skenga in Baltimore. Thank you.